What's up, Heat Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Miami Heat Roundtable. My name is Amir, joined today by Trent. You can find him at Miami Heat Network. And we have Ernest joining us today. You can find him at Miami Heat Talk. What's up, gentlemen? What's up, my guy? How you guys doing? Doing well. Doing well. Happy to have you guys on. It's been a little while since we've seen you, Ernest. Only a week, but it feels like it's been longer. So <laughs> the Miami Heat, we haven't talked to you about this, Ernest. So the Miami Heat are on a three-game losing streak right now after they were playing some of their best basketball. So this team is torture. We know it. They're inconsistent, up and down, two steps forward, one step back. Yep. Frustrating as hell, but we've dealt with this before. So the Heat have lost three, but the worst game was against, obviously, the Wizards. Losing to the Wizards at home was horrendous. I don't care if we didn't have Tyler Hero. I don't care if we didn't have Kevin Love. Like, I didn't care if we have freaking Jimmy that game. Bam and Terry yeah. should have fucking won, you know, like with Jaime and Duncan. So most embarrassing loss. And I want to ask you guys this question. Start with you, Ernest. Is it time for this Miami Heat team to panic? Because we know who we're playing tomorrow. And I'm going to guess we're going to lose. Not to be pessimistic, but we're probably going to be on a four-game losing streak once we play Denver. So is it time to panic? What are your thoughts, ma'am? No. <laughs> no, no Heat fans, Heat Nation listening to this channel right now, relax. Because a couple months ago, we were on a seven-game losing streak. Everybody was ready to put the push the panic button. What happened after that? We went on an eight and two February run. And then you had all these chamacos from ESPN, all these people jumping on the bandwagon. You had Zach Lowe and you had Brian Windhorse come out in ESPN. And they were like, any team that sees this Miami Heat roster in a seven game series, what do they think? Oh, these freaking guys. And this happens to the Miami Heat, bro. I feel like we're the only team in the NBA that scrutinized this much. Because we win three straight and all of a sudden, Jimmy's doing too much. Spoh's uh, dropping stuff. Bam's not the player he has to be. But then we get on this win streak and everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon and talk about how amazing we are. Us Heat fans, us real Heat fans, we know that this is what the season does to us sometimes. I've said this stuff so many times. We play through October to June almost every season. You can't expect these guys to turn it on all the time. There's going to be games that they're going to lose that makes no sense. Last year, we lost two games to Charlotte. We lost a bunch of games to teams that were way under 500. And what did we do last year? We shocked the world. Now, I don't want to use last year as an example for this year, but this team is better than last year. I just chalked that loss against Washington as a bad night in the office. I'll take the loss against um Dallas, I'll take that loss against OKC. I know those were bad losses, but there were close games. We could have won either game. The Washington loss was embarrassing. I feel that the Heat were just coasting. They allowed Kyle Kuzma to do his thing. Dude hit a bunch of shots in the fourth quarter. It was just a bad night in the office. I think that was a wake-up call for Miami. If y'all don't remember, the same thing happened earlier in the season when Jimmy and Bam did a team-the-only meeting. You know, there's a lot of reasons why we've lost these recent games, but I think he fans just need to chill. I think we need to understand that we're a playoff team and come playoff time. I don't care where we are. Eight, seven, six, five, four. I don't care. Ain't no team want this smoke in the playoffs. I feel the same way today. I'll feel the same way come playoffs. What do you think, Trent? Time to panic? Man, oh, man. I, I wouldn't say it's time to panic, but I think – we we should I think everybody wants to see us. I mean, t the Bucks got better, and I and I said we can beat the Bucks, but the Bucks haven't played way better since All Star break. I know they still got their flaws and stuff like that, but Damon Giannis easily can take over a game. Bam and Jimmy, I know Jimmy can take over a game, but I haven't seen that from Bam offensively, and he still hurts. So that's 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 rough for us, right? Um, and then the Celtics are always going to be a threat no matter what. Those are the two teams in our way at the moment. I don't really take the 76ers a threat, and the Knicks are just going to be a battle. But how we're playing at the moment, we're going to lose to all these teams. Let's be honest. This team is not playing good basketball. I get what you're saying, Ernest, but this is the most important part of the season, and we're on a four-game losing streak. I think you can go on a seven-game losing streak earlier in the year, mid part of the season, but this is when Jimmy and this Miami Heat team turns it around a little bit, and 
we're not. We're going the opposite direction. So this is not a good look. You don't lose to the Wizards. I that's especially this late in the season, especially with the seeding purposes. Like that game can change our whole season. Literally can change our whole season. Um, near the end of the season, it's like, damn, we just went on a five game losing streak, but uh, we lost the last game, and then that Wizards game is gonna always haunt us back. Like they're literally one of the worst teams in the league. Like you just can't have that. Um, and so what we're 35 and 29 we're going to be 35 and 30 tomorrow i mean the wish the bowls are going to come near us i mean we're, we're going to be back in this play and i and i don't want to but have you seen enough have you seen enough i i, I haven't tyler's not coming back i think he's out for he's going to be out for the rest of the season they're not talking about the injury i wonder why because they know they don't want to you know rattle us he fans but he's not coming back he's not coming to save us he's not bam's still hurt um I know Amir doesn't believe that, but I think he's still hurt because he got hurt from Taylor Hendricks and that hip thing. So this team's screwed. I think we're still a playoff team, but uh, I'm a little scared. Yeah, I don't think it's time to panic because there's 18 games left. We're two. It's just so frustrating that like the times that we were like moving up in the standings, we had the seven game losing streak, and then moving on up again, we're back at six, five range, and then we lose these three in a row, and if we won those games, like we would solidly be in the fourth. I know that's not the most ideal to some folks. I know Nick, when we had him on from Chat Sports and Ernest, I know you've talked about it as well that, that we want to avoid the Celtics, right? If like the sixth seed is kind of like the most optimal to a certain degree. But I just I just want to play a home court advantage game for once. Like I know we're better on the road, but like ultimately our net rating offensively, even though we've lost more at home technically, what is our record at home? We're 17 and 14 at home, 18 and 15 on the road. It's basically virtually the same. But we still – our role players play better at home. They feel more comfortable at home. They shoot better at home. They play better defensively. So, like, I don't care if you have to play the Celtics in the second round. Like, we're going to have to play them eventually and get by them anyway. But it does – it is better to play them later, obviously. You don't want to yeah. play them first because then we can get knocked out sooner than we need to be. But either way, I'm not panicking because we're still two games from the fourth seed. We're only a game and a half from the fifth seed. And so I'm not panicking right now. And you brought it up, Trent. What the hell's going on? I made a video today about Tyler asking if he's injury prone. Not entirely sure if he is technically because he's not re-injuring the same stuff year after year. He's not a Derrick Rose. He's not a Brandon Roy, you know, that has degenerative knees. But injuries are a big factor, I think, right now. And it might be like the biggest blame. And I, I hate using that as the scapegoat because we have size issues, scoring issues, and all that stuff. But I wrote down some numbers real quick to run by, though. Like, And outside of the Cavs, who have been more injured than the Miami Heat, I looked at one through eight, including the Miami Heat, and it could be almost as simple as injuries are the reason we constantly are the eighth seed, the seventh seed, and why we're not a top four team. Because – Boston has missed 14 games with their big three. I'm not counting KP as the big three. I'm putting in Drew, Tatum, Brown. They've missed 14 games combined, right? Bucks, they've missed 30, which is a lot more, with Giannis, Dame, and that's because of Middleton. But who cares? Giannis is the most important. Dame's the second most important. They've missed 30. The Cavs have missed 70. That is insane. The fact that they're the third seed, only a half game from the Bucks. Mitchell, 18. Garland, 25. Mobley, 27. That's the outlier. That's incredible. But they're a regular season team. We're not worried about them. We're mainly worried about the Bucs. We're worried, mainly worried about the Celtics, right? Knicks, I'm not going to count OG because he joined late. He's hurt. So they don't really have a big three. But it's Randall, 18 games. Brunson, only five. DiVincenzo, one. 24 games total. Sixers, 45. We know Embiid has missed 30. Maxi nine. Harris, six. 45. Magic, 17. Sorry, I'm going this thing a little longer than I expected. But Magic, Paolo, two games. Wagner, eight. Sugg, seven. That's 17. And then lastly, the Pacers, 23 games, 13 from Halliburton, four from Turner. Matherin, six. I'm not going to count Siakam because he joined late. But also, Matherin's out for the season, guys. So the Pacers might fall. We might have to worry about them. He's a really good player. Mm -hmm. Miami Heat, 57. 57 games. Like, the Knicks have missed 30 less games with their their big three compared to us. That's meaningful. And I know Bam, Tyler, and Jimmy don't have the best record together, but them missing so many games 
each season plays a factor of them building chemistry and showing that they could learn how to play together, right? And if we put Hero on the bench, like we've all talked about, we don't need to talk about that today. Their record could be even better because of fit. Like if we have if we have Tyler coming off the bench for those 28 games that he's missed and Jimmy not missing 19 games, I don't want to use this as the biggest excuse because fuck injuries. Like we, we do step up when guys go down, but 57 games, man, outside of the Cavs, 70, no one else has more than 30 games missed with their big three. So that's a big factor. We've had 31 different starting lineups. You know what's crazy is that I remember, like, I've said this so many times on my channel, the reason, like, I call it the curse of LeBron. Ever since LeBron left us in 2014, if you look back every single season, injuries have plagued the Miami Heat. Every single year, way uh, Bosch 2015, Bosch 2016, uh, freaking multiple players in 2017, on and on. The list goes on and on. But in 2014, 2013, people used to knock Dwayne Wade so much for missing time. And what would he play? Like 60 to 65 games. Yep. If we could get that <laughs> from guys like Hero and Jimmy, we would call that a success. Like, and and to Trent's point and to your point, I'm going to agree here. The only way that he can sniff an NBA championship is health. It's the only way. Because last season we saw Jimmy win on this magical run. And yeah, we went to the finals. We couldn't win without Tyler. And I'm telling y'all right now, that magical run ain't going to happen if Jimmy Butler's playing 38 minutes a game in March. He's going to get blown out. He got blown out in the finals last year. Because that Boston, when, when we went when we went three and zero, had Miami closed that series out like they should have, we could have taken it to Denver. But Miami started bullshitting. We lost three straight games. We went seven games, and by the time we beat Denver in Game Seven, they had to go straight. I'm excuse me, Boston in Game Seven, they had to go straight to Denver, no rest. So we need a team that's fully healthy. If we can't have that, bro. It's going to take a way better run than what we did last year to win the championship. And I just don't think we have it in us again. I know the team's better. I know constructively we're better. I know we guys have stepped up. Stephen A. Smith said this the other day in first take, man, and it opened my mind about this Miami Heat team. We are probably the only team in the NBA who's we are good enough to win the NBA championship, but we're bad enough to lose in the first round. Like, that's the Miami team. That's our ceiling. That's our floor. It's incredibly frustrating. It's incredibly mid. But you know with the best playoff performer in Jimmy Butler, the best coach in Spo, and one of the best two-way performers in Bam Adebayo, the Heat can do it. We just need all hands on deck. If we don't have Tyler, I don't think we can win the championship. Yeah, or just health in general. We're, we're, I was talking to Ernest today in the chat saying, in theory, yes, we are we have a better roster. We are deeper than last year. We have a Jaime Jaquez who we didn't have last year. Yep. X Factor. We have a Duncan Robinson who has continued his journey from a three point specialist to a guy who has a skill set where he can put the ball on the floor. He can play make, he can distribute, he could score in the paint. You know, how many buckets he had from two last season 50. He has 120 this season already, and there's still 18 games left. Like, that is significant. So he's even better. We have Jovic in the rotation. He might not play much in the playoffs, but still. We have them available. We have Terry Rozier, who we didn't have last year. Yep. We have Caleb Martin, who is stepping up into form. And guys, remember one factor. What is Caleb Martin playing for for next year, whether it's on the Miami Heat or not? He's playing for his second real contract. He's had a small $9 million, $7 million, $8 million for those three years. He's trying to get Max Struess money. He needs to show out and play his heart out so that he gets the bag from probably not us, but hopefully he can get us the championship. So I think you're right. Like, And I'm looking back again at these numbers. If we look at the top two seeds, the two biggest threats, which we are saying Boston number one, Bucks number two in the East. We have to get through the East first. Tatum, Brown, Holiday, Dame, and Giannis combined have only missed two games more than Jimmy has missed. They've missed 21 games combined. Jimmy's missed 19. Just Jimmy. Not even factoring in Tyler, Bam, Caleb, Jay Rich out for the season. Those five players have missed only two more games than Jimmy has combined. That is insane. So, Trent, I know we don't want to use this as a scapegoat because it's bullshit. Every team does deal with injuries. The Cavs will say, shut the fuck up, Amir. We have 70 games out, like all our best players, and we're better than you record-wise. But is it as simple, in your opinion, Trent, as just like we're just 
injured right now? That's why we can't be a top team? Or is it other factors, do you think? Bam, size, Jimmy taking the mid the season off. What do you think? Well, I think injuries play a factor. But, I mean, you brought up a point. Um, we do – hold up, hold up, real quick. I, I want to say this. Even if we was healthy, I think we'll be a better seeding. I'll say that like we was earlier in the year, but I don't think this team's good enough to win anything. So like, it doesn't matter to me. I don't think this team's good enough to do um, what we want at the moment, at least. And I already told you, Amir, I'm ready for next year. I already got my team. I'm ready for next year. Ernest, she wasn't here. Um, but the team that I'm rolling with for next year, Terry, Jimmy, Bam, that's our new big three. You keep them together. You trade Tyler for some pieces. You keep Jaime, you keep Jovic, and you call it a day. Those are the five players that I want on my roster and fill it out with a bunch of other players. This season, I'm done with. We win. I'm happy with, but I've seen enough. I'm still rooting for my team. I'm still diehard Miami Heat fan, of course. but I've I, I seen enough on my end, Um, and Tyler ain't coming to save us. He's not. This team... um just doesn't have it this year and you know what it is we did so much last year it, it's hard to repeat that it's really hard to repeat that and um going to the finals back to back years a lot of people don't even reach the western conference finals the eastern conference finals it's a lot of work look at the 76ers look at joel and beat and stuff like that us the heat we're always in the eastern conference finals or in the nba finals i think this is a season where we kind of take that step back in a sense because we're just way too injured. The roster's not constructed enough, and I'm ready for next next offseason and, and see what happens. I think Tyler, and this is no bash at Tyler. This is no bash at Tyler. I think Tyler just has the more value, and he's just going to give us what we need to go fill around the big three of Jimmy, uh, Terry, and Bam. So that's what I'm rolling with. Like I said, I've seen enough from this team. I've seen a seven-game losing streak. I've seen them win you know, eight in a row. It's too up and down for me. You, it's too inconsistent. And for you to win a championship, like Shay says, you need to be consistent your whole life. Well, whatever Dan said. He said he said consistent your whole life, Mayor? He said, uh, I'm, how are you so consistent? He's like, I'm consistent in all aspects of my life. Yeah, and, and the Heat are not. The Heat are not consistent at all. So you don't know what Heat team you're going to get. You can get a Heat team that beats the Denver Nuggets tomorrow and we're the happiest fan base in the world. And then you get another uh, Heat team that loses to the Washington Wizards and the Detroit Pistons, which actually we got them coming up after the Denver Nuggets. And don't be surprised when we lose to at least one of those games. Don't be surprised because we play them back to back. So, yeah, that's kind of my take on the Heat. I love them to death, but I don't think we're doing it this year. So I get you, my brother. Like, I'm, I'm with you because I, everything you're saying has merit. And we've talked about this before. And uh, I, I love when Trent's like, I'm not bashing Tyler, but we know that you're the guy that's not the Tyler fan. So I, <laughs> I hear you. But I will say this, Trent. I mean, I've said it before. Like, I think the optimal decision to do in the offseason, take Tyler, put him in a package, get the guy that we need, a big man next to Bam. We know that this ain't working, this whole Caleb Martin, Haywood Highsmith thing. I hope Jovic evolves i hope jovich upgrades but i feel that jovich's optimal position is similar to kevin love we don't know what kevin love is going to do after this year we don't know if he's going to stay or if he's going to go you take tyler hero who's making 27 million package him for a deal you get a guy who's anywhere from like six nine seven feet can space the four hit the three-point shot who you're going to have many options you can go after Miles Turner. You can go after Laurie Markinen. You're, you're going to have a lot of options. The offseason is going to be a beautiful time, especially if, high, if if Trent's right and Tyler doesn't come back. It's going to push the incentive to trade him more because he's officially injury prone. I think it's safe to say now, guys, Tyler Hero's injury prone. This is his third injury this season. This season, Tyler Hero has not been healthy for us since 2020. In that playoff run, we have not seen a Jimmy Tyler and Bam team. We don't know what that's going to look like. I pray and I hope that Trent's wrong. I hope that Tyler gets healthy. I hope that Bam gets healthy. I just want a healthy roster. I want to see what we can do because I'm sorry, y'all. I don't agree with you guys. I think in a seven game series, fully healthy, ain't no team want this smoke. Ain't no team can handle this smoke except for the Denver Nuggets. Clippers. 
Suns, Celtics, Bucks, you name a team, and I'll tell you why we'll beat them, except for the Denver Nuggets. Denver's yep. the only team that has our number. We play Denver in the finals, fully healthy. I'll say this is going to be the probably the one of the most entertaining NBA finals we've seen in a long time. Because we can beat Denver with this roster. We just need to be fully healthy. I mean, I know it's the most obvious thing to say, but that's what we need. And to your point, Trent, about your new big three, Rozier, Bam, and Jimmy. Love it. Love it. You leave Duncan on the team. You leave Hawkins on the team. You, you trade Tyler for the big man, and you will have an NBA championship team next season. I love Tyler, but he's not going to come off the bench as the sixth man. And he plays exactly like Terry Rozier. And it's not that I prefer Tyler than Rozier. I just feel we can get a better value for Tyler rather than Rozier. But here's the question I'm going to pose for you, Trent, and for you, Amir. I've been watching Terry Rozier out there with Bam since he's been traded. And I, I think they got good chemistry, but I'm finna say something right now. I don't think the chemistry is as good as Kyle Lowry and Bam Adebayo in the 2022 season. I think the reason why it worked so well and we were the first seed was because Kyle Lowry would put the ball when where Bam needed it. Terry does not do that. Terry's a sport, a scoring combo guard. I don't think he gives Bam the positioning of the ball that he needs. So maybe the real thing is not to trade Tyler. Maybe the real thing is to shop Terry or, or maybe even Tyler to get that true point guard. So I want to hear what you guys think about that. Uh, I mean, Terry is more of a combo guard compared to Kyle Lowry, who's more of a QB one, which I freaking hated that term, but more of a traditional type of point guard. So I think he did have a better chemistry with Bam, but it took time to develop. He played what two seasons, three seasons with Bam, two and a half. Um, so I think, yeah, I think Kyle Lowry did a better job of putting Bam in better spots and better positions. But I think Terry's capable of that. I think recently, like since Tyler has been out and he doesn't have to try to fit in because he was, you know, being more passive, less aggressive, playing more off ball. Now that he's playing more on ball, he has been increasing his alley-oops to Bam Adebayo. He had a huge one, I think, against the Wizards or against the Thunder. I can't remember which one, but his pick and roll. the Wizards. Yeah, the pick and roll efficiency has been yeah. since Tyler has been gone. So again, that's an issue of, who goes to the bench? We all say Tyler, but I, ideally, I think Terry, at age 29, the newcomer, I think he's the one who would be more willing. He said in that article, we posted about it, I'd be willing to do whatever it takes to help this team win. Yep. He's in his prime right now, but he's also been in the league for 10 years. Like He needs to win a championship. He has less opportunities than Tyler Hero does because Tyler can be part of this build or get traded to another team. And he has 10, 12 more years in his career compared to Terry Rozier. So I think Terry going to the bench could be beneficial if Tyler does come back. But to your point, Ernest, I agree. Kyle Lowry was a better point guard next to Bam to set him up. But I think Terry has been playing really well since Tyler's been out these nine games, has been scoring better, more efficient, and distributing, I guess, a little bit better. What do you think, Trent? Man, Terry Rozier played 17 games, bro. I don't want to hear none of that. The dude been there. He only played a couple of games with Bam, bro. The connection's not going to be there all right away. Look at the Bucks. Look at Damian Giannis, the two best players in the NBA right now. It took them pretty much damn near half the season to find how to play together, and now they're finding their groove. Give Terry Rozier and Bam a whole full season. They're going to be nasty together. Tyler Harrow, to me, doesn't have his um his offensive game is just, it's it's boring. He can't. He doesn't know how to do much. He's weak. He has no handles. He can just shoot a floater and shoot fadeaway threes and call it a day. That's not offense. That's bullcrap offense. That's Jordan Poole offense right there. You see Jordan Poole just got benched, right? Yep. And Tyler Harrow, if he improves his offensive game, will be very, very good. He's already good right now, but he can be even better. But each year, it seems like his play stays the same or gets a little bit worse. And so why continue to deal with that? Especially with Tyler Harrow, I mean, especially with Jimmy getting older, we're just going to keep taking steps back. I mean, this year, when you compare the stats and how Tyler has played, I honestly think he played worse this season than last year. And he's averaging 0.7 more. His field goal percentage is down. His three-point percentage is up by two. His rebounds is down. And 
everything is very identical. So there's no improvement. There's no nothing with Tyler. Unless he improves, we ain't going nowhere. Terry Rozier is that combo guard that has the experience, right? He's going to get – He, I think he's a better scorer than um Tyler. I do. Maybe not in this role because there's so many options, but – um, Tyler, you can tell you can tell Terry Rozier is getting better though, and that's what I like. Each game Good. is improving, improving. So like I said, seventeen games, give him more time. Good. You know what? We're talking about Tyler and Terry coming off the bench, but we're really not talking about the real reason why. I think a lot of people are talking about, oh, you know, Terry and Tyler, they play a similar game. I don't think that's a real reason. I think the real reason we ne really need one of those guys to come off the bench is because of Duncan Robinson. And this isn't really talked about a lot. People don't really talk about what Duncan's like coming off the bench versus starting. Why do we want Tyler and Terry to come off the bench? Because we want a true six man. We want a guy who's going to come off the bench and do what Tyler and Terry does. Create on their own and dominate the second stringers. Duncan, even though I feel like he's evolved his game, I don't think he's at that level. I don't think you can give Duncan the ball at the key isolate and have him create his own play even though he's gotten better without the ball and with the ball he's better with jimmy and bam out there the spacing the play the offense it runs better while duncan's starting we saw this back in 2020 with jimmy and bam bam's first all-star season when duncan starts it works when duncan comes off the bench i feel like duncan has to play a different game and he has to find himself so that's another reason why I prefer, I don't care. It could be Tyler or Terry Rozier. It doesn't matter. But if one of them comes off the bench with Kevin Love as the backup center, with Caleb Martin and Jaime Hawkins as your Swiss Army Knives, Nikola Jovic as your starting power forward next to Bam. So you have two guys that are about 6'9", 6'10", that can lead the offense and space the floor on their own. You got Jimmy as a dog. You got Duncan hitting threes. And either Terry or Tyler coming off the bench as the six man to play against the second units in the playoff games. That's why I feel like we're a dangerous team, but we need to be fully healthy and we got to put the optimal lineup together. So to Trent's point, am I thinking about next season? Fuck no, because that's next year. Yep. I'm confident in this roster. I know that this roster can do it. I don't care what our record says in paper. I don't care about any other team because in the seven game series, Spo's going to outcoach the other team's opposing coach. We saw it last year. He got two coaches fired. So Sp Spo's the best coach. If Bam's healthy, if Jimmy's healthy, if Tyler's healthy, and if everyone's on their game, I don't care. I believe in this squad. Hey, I will say this, Ernest. That sounds good and all, but we haven't seen that a consistent stretch for 20 games in a row. So, sounds good. I ain't buying it. Spo is a big problem if you really want to talk about it. A lot of my supporters haven't even noticed in this. Spo is a great coach, but he hasn't been doing his best job personally, in my opinion, this year. Too inconsistent. He can't find a proper rotation, and I think that's not really his fault. But, bro, we're damn near near the end of the season. We still don't know a rotation that we're rolling with. You're not playing DeLon right, which you need to play DeLon right. Like, I mean, you, you was too stubborn to play Jovic, and then he finally started playing Jovic, and look what he's doing. Spo, Spo this year um, hasn't been Spo that, that I like. Um, and so I think that's a concern. Like, let's be for real. Why isn't Wright playing against Luka or Shea? You brought him in here. And then what makes it worse is that sounds messed up. The Celtics should have just took Wright. The Celtics could use Wright. The, the Heat lied to Wright and said that we're going to give you minutes and hasn't touched the court since. What's up with that? You're lying to people now. I get it. Wright can be one of those players that uh, like can be a spot up, like a like spot minutes. Need him, but when we needed him, where was he? Where was he? Why wasn't he playing? Why couldn't he slow down Shea? Because he wasn't out there. You know why? Because Coach Spo didn't want to put him in. But you know what they wanted to do? They want to put Patty Mills in. Yeah, that's cool. Get the eleven points, hit a couple threes. What is Patty Mills doing on the defensive end? He ain't doing squat nothing. And what this team is, is about defense. And Patty Mills does not bring that. And don't be surprised being Patty Mills being out the rotation tomorrow. Because Spo's putting people, checking if they can play, get them out the rotation. He's going to do that to Jovic in the playoffs. He's going to mess up our rotation again. Haywood Highsmith, out the rotation already. In the, earlier in the year, he was in the rotation. 
We need to find a consistent rotation. This team is not consistent, and that's why our record hasn't been good as it. Honestly, it's better than last year, but it should be 10 times better, and we should have a better seeding. We shouldn't be an eighth seed at the moment. We shouldn't. or we That shouldn't happen. So Spo needs to figure out his damn rotations, and needs to figure out who deserves to play. It's simple as that. You've been talking about rotations forever on your channel and even on the ROM table, and to this day, we haven't found a rotation, and that's concerning to me. When you look at these yep. other teams, they already know what they're rolling with heading into the playoffs. We don't know who the hell we're going with. Who are we going with? I mean, why. we do. How? Yeah, yeah. No, who, we know the rotation right now. We do. We do. Well, look, how do we look, know the rotation? Because okay. Of why do we have, Let's, we have three different people because of injuries? Like, yeah, like, but I'll tell you the rotation. Bam, Jovic, Jimmy, Duncan, You're Terry. wrong. You're wrong. Jovic is not touching the rotation in the playoffs. He's not. It's done and over with. He's going to play 14 know. minutes. He's going to play the 14 minutes and never play again. Cuz he shouldn't be playing. He's a he's a he's a No, he's a good player. He should be on the court. He this team is not good enough to be picking and choosing of who should not be on and off the court. He's good enough to be on the court, but Spo doesn't want to give him the minutes. He plays okay. the 14 minutes and never see him again. There was a game that recently happened where he should have been playing, never touched the court again. It's Spo. Spo's being one of these. I don't even know what what to call him, but I know y'all agree on this. The lawn right should be playing. Why isn't he playing? I, I Spo, Go, Mayor. Spo, Spo tinkers too much. Yes, right. Like he's a mad scientist. He has a lot of players at his disposal. So he's like a kid on Christmas with a million toys. He doesn't know what to do with them, but he's gonna figure it out eventually. That he doesn't care about these toys. He's gonna play with the best ones. He we're keyboard keyboard warrior coaches. Like, come on, suppose the best coach in the NBA. He knows what he's doing. Like, Delon Wright is a buyout player. We don't need to be depending on a guy who's been on seven. We do. We do. We do. This, this is team is not good enough. This team is not good enough at all. We need to rely on bro. Delon Wright. You see what Luca did to us. You seen what Shade done to us. Who Terry's not stopping nobody. Jimmy. We can't rely on Jimmy slowing these guys down. He's not that two-way guy like he used to be, and we can't rely on that. You brought him in to – you didn't bring DeLon right in for offense. No, you brought him in because of his two-way ability. That's when you put him in. If you want to do spot minutes, like we're talking about heading into playoffs where Haywood or different matchups, that's the perfect matchup that we needed. Luka and Shea bust our cheeks. Yeah, I'm I not know. saying DeLon Wright was going to slow them – like – put them to zero points Thank but you. he would have slowed them down a little bit but Spo said nah 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 let's, let's let terry let duncan get the ass kick fuck it like bro, bro come on delon wright is not prime Kawhi leonard on defense He's but, not gonna okay so who's our, so okay now let me ask you this question right let me ask you this question outside of bam who's our best perimeter defense uh defensive player on the team right now outside of bam maybe it's delon wright personally maybe. in my opinion nah caleb caleb's better pro <sighs> caleb jimmy um, I'm my not Haywood. Haywood. Jimmy? Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah. He was younger. He was younger than him. He's Bro, Jimmy, J you got to realize, Jimmy's not... Y'all, like, like I get it. Like, we're trying to be, like, big. Like, we're all he fans. Bro, Jimmy's not... Dude, what are you talking Jimmy about? He's one of the best two-way players in the yeah. NBA. No, Do you not no, watch no. him play? No. Trent, Seriously. Trent wants Jovic to play. And, uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Dude. I, 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 want, I want my team to play the best players available, and DeLon Wright is the best player available that needs to be playing. That's okay. what I want. Patty and I Mills agree. Should not, Patty Mills was a, a signing because Jay Rich was out for the season. I understand that. He does not play. He does not need to play. Why is he playing? He does not need to play. We don't need him. We because, need him. because you're going to need – okay. In a seven-game series, your stars win you two. You need guys to step up, role players to step up. You need to play Patty Mills because you need him ready if you need to get a few three-pointers come playoff time. You need to play DeLon right in certain games to see when he's ready. Guys, we're not in the practice. We don't know what's what's happening. There could be stuff going on that we don't even know with DeLon right. There's only so much we know. Look at this whole Tyler Hero thing. We know nothing. The Heat keep things close to the cup. So right there, if DeLon Wright's not being played... It's for a reason. Patty Mills has championship caliber experience. You bring a guy in like that to help you win. Is he going to do anything? Probably not. But these buyout guys can give you one game. Patty Mills comes from a San Antonio Spurs culture. Spo puts him out there to see what he can do with this team. 
I think he's already seen enough from DeLon Wright. I love De DeLon Wright's de defensive tenacity. I agree with Trent there. Why he's not playing, I don't know. I thought the same thing. I'm watching the game. I'm like, why don't you put DeLon Wright out there? I Makes agree. no sense. I agree. But we can't argue there. Spo with Spo, you got to ride with his great. You got to ride with him when you love him, and you got to deal with him in the bad times, just like other players as well. That's all I'm saying. I can't answer that question for you, Trent. I think it's garbage. I think Delon Wright should be playing. Come playoff time, I trust Spo that he's going to try to put the right lineup out there. We just need to be healthy. That's it, yeah. man. And also collectively, defense is our identity. We're the eighth, whatever ranked defensive rating. Offense for 21 have been 25th even. I think that's why we're giving Patty Mills some opportunities right now because collectively we still think we're okay. For some reason, I don't agree why DeLon Wright's not playing. I said the same shit. Why is he not playing? We need help on our point of attack. He's our only other guard right now, I guess, off the bench because right now Jay Rich is out, Tyler's out. Why is he not playing? Why is Patty Mills 35 playing? To Ernest's point, get him familiar with the team. Get him some minutes. Get him in our system because when playoffs come, if we're going to lock down on defense, we're going to yeah. play the defense. Jamie's going to play defense in the playoffs. He's going to play a lot harder. So is Caleb. So is Bam. Let me we, need, ask you a question. we need points. Offense is our biggest issue. Let me let me ask you a question. I like I get it. Like I consistencies. Like I, we have a lot of faith in this team, but why? Especially this season. Why do we have faith? Because of previous years. It that's a question of both of y'all. No. We have so much faith because of previous years that we didn't do shit. Yes or no? Yes or no? A we lot. haven't done anything. We talk about. I talk about Spa all the time being the best coaches in the NBA, and I, 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 I think he still is. But he hasn't done anything too. Don't forget, he wants the. He's the reason why we're playing small ball. He wants to run what he wants to run, and it's not working. It's not working at all. We need to change it up. If Ethan said what he said, and that's correct. And I told you, look at Spo, why we keep running small ball with Haywood, I, Smith, and Caleb and not having a legit four and having size on this team. You look at your coach. He hasn't won anything in a while. These were told, the rotations and adding a legit big man. Where, when was the last big man we had? Bams is out there by himself. That's why Bam can't approve his offensive game because he has to worry about getting an offensive rebound, playing one through five because of all that. You're putting your players in bad positions. So we could talk about Spo being the best coach, but let's be honest, there's a lot of flaws that I've been noticing. And all coaches have flaws. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're, I'm criticizing him because we need to win now. Time's ticking. Tick, 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 tick. Jimmy's gone in the next couple years. Time's ticking. You're right. Simple let's, as that. I agree there. Before let's end this, we're at time. Also, I'm gonna tell you one thing before we're talking shit on Spo, who had 31 different starting lineups. Okay. And also, we're the we're the fourth most injured team. I talk about injuries. I, I hate using this as an excuse because it's bullshit, right? We're the fourth most injured team. If you look at the top three, I can't remember them anymore. I looked at it yesterday. It's like the Memphis Grizzlies. It's like the Atlanta Hawks. It's like another shitty team. Insert shitty team. What is the common denominator of the four teams? The three of them are horseshit, and the Miami Heat are so good, so deep, and they have the best coach in the NBA that even with being the fourth most injured team in the NBA, we are one and a half. We're two games away from the fourth seed. Like, I, know I know you're talking shit on Spo, but like, what? Nah, I'm not buying that. The NBA? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing Why? that because Spo's Spo is known for he don't care who's injured. I get it. He's playing what he got available and stuff like that, and that goes for him in the front office and stuff like that. But what is Spo? You're injured. All right, we gonna, I'm gonna figure this out. I'm gonna go figure this out. He don't care who's on the court. He don't. He's gonna be like, we we gonna win no matter. We're gonna. I gotta figure this out. And this year, roster construction was horrible. The last couple of years, roster construction has been horrible. Fair. So, it's not all him. So throw. You gotta throw. No, pass. bro. I'm blaming. Yeah. This, I'm blaming this on everybody. He's not a, he's not plays. No, listen. Spo plays a part. Jimmy plays a spark. Uh, Pat plays a spark. And uh, a spark. <laughs> a sp uh, part. Whatever the fucking word. Part. And um, Andy, play they all play a part. If you're telling me they don't all play a part, you're okay, lying to me right now. It then. Every it's single one of them play a part. Me. Every single one of them play a part. Every single one of them. Bro. Especially Spo, who's a coach that's going to be there until he retires. They were, they're they going to listen to what he got to say. No matter what. Because he calls the shots. When it comes to team, he calls the shots. This guy Trent, I, I agree with you, but what Amir just said is reason why he's the best coach in the NBA. I mean, that, that, that what? Because we're give... eighth seed? How's he? The... No, because, we're, because, because, dude, with all these injuries, 
with all this crap that's happened, we should have been at the bottom of the East. No, the fact no, that, no, yes. no, no. I just said it. earlier, Jimmy stop Butler. It. You've missed. It. Okay, hang on, hang on. Stop you're telling me, no, you're telling no. me, you're telling me that if a lot of other teams, their big three, missed a total of over 70 games, their three best players, they should all still be playoff teams. That's uh, what you're saying. Clippers. The Clippers are a playoff team, even with their best players out, and they made it to a playoff series. What are you talking yeah, about? Kawhi, Kawhi has played more games than Jimmy. Kawhi Leonard was hurt in the playoffs. Paul George oh was hurt. Oh my in the God, playoffs. that's the same thing that we're saying, dude. No, 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 no. You just said, no, 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 Ernest. <laughs> you said, Ernest, you said, you said this team will be bottom, bottom, bottom without their star players. That's what you said. And I said the Clippers were missing their best guys in the regular season, in the regular season, and still made it to the play. Did you did you forget Paul George was out for the uh, season? And they were just only running with Russ and Kawhi? Did you forget that? What's that's a different and they game. barely made it to the they literally what do you like? They made it to the playoffs. Okay, time out. Let me stop there. Clippers. I worked for the LA Clippers back in the day, so I was part of that organization. We're not talking about back in the day. We're talking about the season they played the Phoenix Suns. We're talking about the history of the Clippers. They haven't won shit. They have zero championships. They're not. Yeah, and what have we done? What have we done since fucking three what? Since Eastern we... Conference championships? What does that award years, you want? Two what NBA does that award you Not a lot of teams. Can nothing. Play that, my dude. Nothing. It doesn't you award you nothing because at the end of the day, when Jimmy retires, he's going to have zero if we keep playing like this. That's fine. but at least how, many the, how many championships do the Clippers have? Don't worry, I'll wait. You said Don't what? worry, I'll wait. Yep. That was an example of other teams doing with injuries. You got to realize One, every team two. deals with injuries. I get it. The Heat deal with injuries the most. But roster construction, if it wasn't a problem, this like. but guess what? We don't want to add the right players around us. It's simple as that. We don't add the right players around us. You you say Jimmy needs to take the season off. I don't see. Like, come on, bro. Like, stop it, bro. Stop, stop it, bro. I, I'm tired of that Jimmy. Let's end on that. Huh? No, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Nah, nah. Cause now, nah, cause listen. I'm letting this all out. I'm tired of everybody giving a pass to Jimmy. Ah, oh, Jimmy, this. He, he can't go too hard now because he can't go hard in the play. If yo, bro, I, I'm tired of hearing it. You think these other NBA players don't go hard all 82 games and go in the playoffs and go, and still go hard? I'm tired of Jimmy can't. We got a baby Jimmy. F out of here. We can't stop babying Jimmy. Stop babying him. That's all we do is baby the dude. God damn it, Trent. You're getting me to be on the opposite side. The Miami Heat are going to win the championship this year. I'm calling it right now. We're That's fine. And this. I hope we do. That's the thing. That's the We're thing. Not. I hope no, we I do. Hope I hope we do. All I know, do. all I know is Let's end I, it hear, I hear the frustration. Final no, final thought. I know the frustration, but come in June, everybody's going to be on the bandwagon again. I'm calling it now. But we just got to pray to the Lords that we could somehow beat the Nuggets because I think we could beat the Celtics. I just don't think we could beat the Nuggets. Facts. He ain't yeah. making. He ain't making out the second round. That's my final thought. All right. Get ready for the regular. Get ready for the post. Get ready for the off season. We ain't getting out the second round. We're hey, it's gonna enough. be. It's gonna be fun. Videos we're cutting though. All off season long. It's gonna be so fun. It is. Because oh, yeah, you think that was a rant? Oh, I'm gonna kill this whole team. Well, not. Oh me. man, I can't wait. I can't I wait might, for the off season. I might join you, Trent. I go up. I go back and forth to this team, bro. I feel you. So do not kill <laughs> the team, you two. Roast the team. Like yeah. go off on them. Well, don't forget, guys, like button, subscribe, Miami Heat Network, Team to Be Miami Heat, Miami Heat Talk. Don't forget about Miami Heat Zone Podcast. We all hear y'all. Like, subscribe. This was one of my favorite roundtable episodes. This was great. Girl. I love this. I love this, guys. Thank you. All right, guys. Have a good one.